folks, this is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Arkansas. We've got a strong community of people with homesteading skills growing in Arkansas, people doing good work to care for the land and to care for themselves. Let's see how the state is looking as we move towards 2050. The federal reports group Arkansas with the Southeast, so let's see what we can figure out from their maps. So we're going to look first at the historical data around precipitation in the state. We know we're not great at figuring out what the weather is going to be three years out, let alone 30 years out. But we know <clears throat> that if we look at trends, we can hope that the trends will continue. And it does seem like trends are likely to continue and become more extreme over time as we move towards mid-century. Over the last 120 years, there's been a major increase in heavy precipitation across the state. The red means an increase in precipitation. We can see there's a ridge here where as you go down to the lower elevation areas, there's a tendency towards a dryness, towards drought. And as we look above that ridge, up at the higher elevations, we see up to a 100% change in increases in deluge-like rain, heavy precipitation. So as you think about building resilience towards weather in your area, you're gonna to wanna to consider, am I going to need to be able to store excess water or divert excess water away from my home? in these deluge prone areas, or in this drought prone corner especially, am I gonna need to think about backup irrigation? These are the kind of um, practical adaptation things that we should be considering when we look at this data. Let's check out the historical data too for nighttime warming trends. We look up here, we can see that Arkansas hasn't seen a big daytime warming trend over the last 120 years, which has increased skepticism legitimately about climate change. If you don't personally experience it, you're more likely to disbelieve it, right? But that lack of daytime change does hide the fact that the nights, particularly in the Delta region, have been really warming up. We see that trend is not present up at our higher elevations, which is kind of good news in terms of agricultural productivity up in those higher elevation places. But looking into this warm nights, those warm nights are going to cause problems. And let's look, Arkansas has always had some warm nights, particularly down in that Delta region. And there's been a tendency to have maybe two, three weeks not more than a month of really warm nights in the region where you can't cool down without air conditioning. But if we look here under RCP 4.5 at mid-century, we expect a pretty substantial nighttime heat up where we're gonna go from having less than a month of warm nights to having more like a month and a half and some hot spots in populated areas. We see that Little Rock is looking at a pretty substantial heat up. So, that is concern, concerning. There's pretty good conservation of those cool nights in the mountains, not a lot of change projected. But as we get towards the Mississippi Delta, there are quite substantial changes, quite substantial warm up. So, you know, we expected a warm, humid summer in this area already, but especially if you're in that lower elevation part of Arkansas, you should expect that to be in kind of next level as we move towards 2050. We see some distinct heat island effects in those cities too. Those nighttime temperatures in Little Rock are going to have more energy demands than they have now, right? People are going to want to have the more air on more and not just to be comfortable. We're talking about the kind of nighttime heat where access to air conditioning is important for public health. But if you're up in those mountains, and I know from your emails and messages that quite a few of our friends in Arkansas are, these should be largely encouraging maps so far. <clears throat> those cool nights, they're very important for plant growth during the warm summers of this region. When it gets over 85, 90, many important crops like corn and soy, they start to see real losses in production. That's not a big problem when you have a cool night, they do their growing at night. But down in the Delta region, if you have a prolonged time where it doesn't get below that temperature, even at night, you're looking at real serious potential for crop failure, definitely looking at yield decreases. This though, it's all been talking about nighttime temperatures. Let's take a look at projected increases in summer daytime temperatures and summer duration. We'll go over to the heat zone map here. <clears throat> so here's our historical data looking at uh, 1980 to 2009. These are our days over 86 a year, where in this corner of the state right now, you expect to have less than three months over 86, but most of the state it's more. Most of the state it's more like four or five months over 86. 
Let's look at changes as we move towards 2050 over 4.5. We notice a pretty substantial heat up. And I want to show again, I want to go back and forth for a second. Because most of the state, we see one increase. Let's focus on the Delta region right now. It's kind of stepping up one level, right? But up here in these mountains, we see some areas where it's stepping up two levels, where it's going from yellow to this darker red. See that this area here, I would be really worried potentially about heat stress in trees and thus potential wildfire. But let's get some more information. Let's go over to the plant hardiness zone map. All right, so the plant hardiness zone map lets us look at changes in winter temperature and changes in our winter lows. And this is our contemporary, our 1980 to 2009 map, where we can see hardiness zones six, seven, and eight. And let's look over to mid-century under 4.5. And unfortunately, we do see retreat there and there, where we had zone six moving into zone seven. So these parts of the mountains that we're experiencing a severe summer heat up, a more than two months difference in summer heat, they're also experiencing winter changes. And let's go back and forth so you can see that. So that's, that's challenging. That's going to be very challenging for tree health. And when we talked about how Little Rock, for example, is likely to need more power for air conditioning in the summer, we can see that these populated uh, areas, Jonesboro, Little Rock, they're going to be experiencing milder winters as well. So it's a pronounced year-round warming trend. So this is uh, fairly challenging, you know, in those areas, especially in the northwest corner of the state where we saw changes in summer heat and changes in plant hardiness zone, you're talking about a high level of stress on your forests, on your tree populations. I would be concerned as we move towards mid-century about wildfire, particularly in that quite populated corridor with Bentonville, Rogers, Springdale, and Fayetteville. There are gonna be more people living kind of up against the forests there. And that's the situations we've seen in the West in California where destructive wildfires can really cause damage to life and property. Fortunately, we can learn from what's been happening in the West and work to build resilience against wildfire. Controlled burns can be a very important tool in managing this changing landscape and looking at making fire safe areas around houses and property, keeping fire in mind when you sculpt the landscape around your home. These are methods that have been found to make a big difference. There looks to be a little more climactic stability in the Ozark National Forest when we looked at those maps. So hopefully we won't get big wildfires in that special place. Before we wrap this up, I wanna point out, there were almost no references directly to Arkansas in the federal report, but Fayetteville has done a very nice job collecting state-oriented resources. And I wanna show you this page. I'll put the link in the description for the video. This has all kinds of cool stuff on it showing a progression over time. Although you may notice some signs that it may not have been updated super recently. One thing that I really like is they have a side-by-side -side of the 1990 hardiness zone map and the 2012 hardiness zone map. That can be hard to find side-by-side. -side. It lets you see that these uh, winter shifts, these dramatic winter heat ups have already been happening in the region. But what I really wanna focus on here is the projected changes in tick habitat. So over the last 20 years, we've seen more ticks move into the region. And we do expect them to pretty thoroughly colonize the place by 2050. Ticks, they carry uh, insect-borne disease, they carry Lyme disease. There's also in the federal reports a probability that mosquitoes that carry tropical diseases like dengue fever are gonna move into Arkansas by mid-century. So that's challenging to know about. But if you're aware of the possibility of these new diseases coming into the region, they're not going to scare you as much. And a lot of them, if you treat them right away, like Lyme disease, they're very treatable. But if they're not treated, they have pronounced long-term effects. So it's nice to be able to think about including these new diagnostic possibilities. Let's wrap this up. In Arkansas, you are looking at high levels of change. I know there are many people hoping to get securely established in the mountain areas. From this information, I think you can get a clear idea 
of what parts of the mountains will see less relative change and which will see more. The state as a whole, we're looking at hotter, more humid summers and milder winters by 2050, particularly down by the Mississippi. You're gonna need people to have access to cooling for these hotter summers because the nights are not going to cool down as well as they used to. As you think about preparedness, you are gonna to wanna to evaluate the wildfire risks in your area, particularly if you're near those parts of the mountains that are seeing unusually high rates of change, that are getting warmer faster than other parts of the state. You'll also wanna keep an eye towards insect-borne disease. Be aware that biting insects like ticks and mosquitoes are likely to really increase throughout the state. It's interesting to know that as you make the home fire safe, as you get a good margin around the home away from tall grass and other vegetation, you are also making that home much safer from ticks. So real challenges in the state, but there are tested strategies that can help build resilience to these challenges. And as we've been able to highlight the parts of the state that are looking at a more conserved climate. If you're in an area that's anticipating a lot of change, anticipating a shift towards zone eight, you'll wanna think about plants that don't rely on a pronounced nighttime cooling period for growth. That'll help you get ahead of the changes. As you're thinking about the agricultural future of the state, don't get too discouraged. You're gonna to need to be tough. You're gonna to need to be open to change and you need to be open to opportunity. As we move towards 2050, every agricultural outlook has to be informed by the probable serious decrease in production of table crops from the Southwest and the value of zone eight and nine areas with adequate water, such as you'll have in your state. In Arkansas, I'm sure you also wanna know about the outlook for rice under 2050 conditions. I went way down the rabbit hole looking at rice. Considering your high humidity, you may be okay with rice. Studies that included high humidity with high nighttime temperatures, they found pretty good growth in rice. So it's looking quite possible we'll be able to continue successful rice growing in Arkansas under these changing conditions. We don't have a great outlook for soy. You see decreased pod fill under the projected conditions but change doesn't have to be bad. We can harness change. So hopefully this video helped you get information you need as you start to think, get some idea of how you can harness these changes in the decades to come. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope, we can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.